This is Nasco from The Great Reset. This is a little bit of a longer video. The reason for it is the first part I explain what happened with the GameStop stock in the last week. This has been covered pretty well, but if you haven't seen it, please feel free to see it. In the second part, I explain why it happened. I have marked in the timeline where the second part starts. Also, fair warning. There are some videos that I play with a little bit of echo that got picked up from my headphones. It's not too annoying, but I apologize in advance. Number two, I use some bad words. I hope you're not sensitive to them, but if you are, you've been warned. Thank you. Today, we're go I'm going to try to explain what happened with the Wall Street bets short squeeze and why I think the market got fucked. Why on Thursday you couldn't buy GameStop shares? I've heard a lot of explanations. I've watched a whole bunch of guys trying to explain it, and they all make a good explanation of what happened. But none of them come to the conclusion that I come. And I think this is the most likely scenario of how things evolved. So, first, let's see what happened. First, we have Melvin, a hedge fund that has a huge short position on. GameStop. The guys on Wall Street bets figure out that GameStop is overshorted and the short interest on the stock is about 150%. And this is where the Wall Street bet guy Wall Street bets guys start pumping the stop to create a short squeeze. What happens to Melvin is they're about to go bankrupt because of their huge exposed short position. So they go to their buddies at a Citadel. Citadel invests two, two billion in them. They are a self-clearing house, meaning that when they place bets on the market, they go directly to the DTC. DTC is the company that helps clear all the bets. Now, most of us did not know this company even existed until this week, and a lot of us didn't even know how that whole process worked when you buy or sell a share. So basically, when you buy a share, you need to go through a clearinghouse or you need to self-clear the trades. In this case, Citadel is a self-clearing company. And what that means is when they place a trade, until the trade clears, until the money transfers its hands. So when they buy a stock or a position in any kind of security, there is, a, there is about a two-day processing time between the actual trade happening and until the money clears from one brokerage to the next. To ensure that the market for, functions properly, DTC is basically a com like an escrow company that makes sure that the settlement occurs appropriately. For them to ensure that they require from the clearing houses to deposit usually about 2% 2% of the value of the trade until settlement occurs. So when Citadel buys stocks, they need to deposit 2% usually of whatever they bought to, and to be held there for two days until the money that they paid to the seller of the stock gets there. Now, DTC also works with Robinhood. Robinhood is also self-clearing brokerage, meaning that there is no intermediate, there is no middleman between Robinhood and DTC. They also usually pay about 2% of the transaction to DTC to hold until the transaction is cleared. Now, one thing that's important to know, let's say you're trading on Robinhood and you bought Apple. You paid 130 bucks for Apple. Robinhood is not allowed to get your money and use that as a deposit to DTC. They have to use their own funds to place that deposit until the trade clears. What that means is Rob Robinhood has to post 2% of the 130 bucks, so let's say 250. In DTC, the trade clears, the money transfers hands, your money goes to whoever sold you the share, and then the deposit is returned. And what Robinhood also does is 
the way they make money is by selling the information of the orders that are placed to Citadel. For example, you're trying to buy Apple. Current price is 130. Citadel gets the information that you're willing to pay market price, and currently it's 130. But at the same time, in fractions of seconds, they find out somebody willing to sell it for 129.90, for example. They buy it off that guy, sell it to you, and they make 10 cents. This is what Citadel pays Robinhood for. Citadel is also an investor in Robinhood, which means they're privy to their financial information. Other brokerages work through a clearinghouse. These are companies that don't clear the transactions themselves, mostly for financial reasons. They are just interested in, uh, in being the interface and the brokerage that you use for the trades. So what they do is they pay for that service to a clearing house. Then that clearing house pays the 2% fee to DTC so that the transaction occurs properly. Pretty much the same way as Robinhood, they just have a middleman and they pay that middleman for that service. Now, what happened when the short squeeze became enormous to be able to cover the position or get a hold of GameStop's stock, it became very expensive, especially if you want to short GameStop stock. So DTC, due to the volatility, the stock jumping up over 100%, started requiring everybody in that symbol, plus about 14 others, to post 100%. So let's say you buy GameStop for 300. Robinhood has to have 300 of their own money and deposit that into DTC for at least two days, for two days until the trade clears. So you buy it GameStop, you have to deposit that and it has to sit there for two days. Now, Robinhood didn't have that money. The clearing houses of Weboo and all the other small brokerages also didn't have that money. International brokers did not have that money. Their clearing house also did not have that money. So they didn't have a choice but to stop accepting, accepting buy orders for um, those symbols. Now, here is where it gets interesting. This has been explained on a lot of YouTube videos. And the speculation is that was, at least in the beginning, that somehow Citadel, due to their close relationship with Robinhood, had them stop accepting buy orders. So they have the time to first to enter new shorts into GameStop and at the same time cover the old short positions that Melvin has. Actually for Melvin to cover them themselves. But that's what the speculation was. At the same time, even prior to the shutdown, Melvin announced they've covered their short position. Even though nobody believes that because the short interest is still over 100%. Now, most people by this point are starting to get mad at Robinhood and Weibo. Let me tell you why you can be mad at Robinhood and why you can't be mad at Weibo. I'm going to play you a couple of clips so you can see the difference between both CEOs. This is what the CEO of Robinhood said when he was asked why this had to be done. Business model in 2019 and in 2020, um, we added millions of new customers. The entire industry added millions of new customers who took advantage of the market rally and became investors for the very first time. So, you know, we had to make a very difficult decision to protect uh, our customers and our firm. Why? Uh, but we in no way... Uh, why? Explain why. They had to make a decision to protect their customers and the firm. This is the dumbest explanation ever. And you're going to hear why in just a few minutes. You had to do it if it wasn't to protect the guys who had shorted uh, the stocks, which are the big hedge funds. How are you helping the little guy investors? Well, I know that there's rumors around that, um, you know, we were directed by market makers or other market participants to do this. And I want to be 100% clear, this decision was not made on the direction of any market maker or uh, other market participants. There's so why'd you do it? Decision. Robinhood, uh, as a brokerage, has lots of financial requirements. SEC requirements. We have to put up money at clearing houses. 
The amount of money that we have to put up depends on market volatility, and we're in historic uh, we're in a historic situation where there's a lot of activity and a lot of buying concentrated in a relatively small number of symbols that are going viral on social media. So we haven't really seen anything like this before, and to to prudently manage. Uh, the, the risk and the deposit requirements, uh, we had to restrict buying in these 13 stocks. But customers that held them could sell throughout. Uh, thousands of other securities and stocks on our platform were available to freely trade. And our number one priority, as you mentioned, is to make sure our platform is reliable, stable for our customers. We're serving our customers and giving them the tools. But that's exactly and what's we're a doing question everything now. in our power to turn it back on as soon as prudent. But that's the thing, is that the trust is... A He's extremely vague. He's not explaining why they had to do that, just giving stupid words like it was uh, volatile, we, it was prudent, we wanted to protect our customers, and we wanted to protect the firm. Why? is not answered. It's just the actual reason why this happened. Did you guys run out of money? is not answered. Now, listen to what a smart CEO who is not gagged had to say. You trade so much volume now, having all that paper obviously does not work. So companies like... I just for, I forgot to say, this is the CEO of Weibo. Like DTC were started. DTC is the go-to company. They own this business, basically. They pretty much have a monopoly. There are alternative ways to settle trades, but DTC settles more than 95% of trades that happen on the street. Now, DTC needs to, needs to maintain an orderly marketplace, meaning if you sell a share, you are going to receive payment for those shares. That's what they guarantee. And in order to guarantee that, they set collateral rates um, for custodians, right, or, or clearing firms. So typically, on a typical day, there is two days till settlement. You trade today, you trade today, you have tomorrow, Friday, and then you have Monday. So the stock will settle on Monday. Those two days, between Friday and until the until the funds actually come and exchange hands, so to speak, someone has to fund that trade, and the clearing firm does that. That's one of their jobs. And typically, there's a collateral of about anywhere from one to three percent. So if you were selling a share of Apple, that clearing firm until settlement date would pay two percent of the notional value of that trade to DTC that DTC will hold as collateral until settlement happens. Now, because GameStop, AMC, and KOSS are so volatile, DTC has raised that requirement collateral rate to 100 percent, meaning that for every single dollar that exchanges hands in those stocks, the clearing firm has to send for deposit for two whole business days that exact same amount of the notion of the trade. Now, when we're talking about GameStop at $250, $350, billions of shares trading, we're talking about hundreds of billions of dollars that the clearing firm physically has to send in cash to the, to the to DTCC to hold there for two whole business days. And to be frank, the clearing firms are not that well capitalized. They can't do that. So in order to stop the clearing firm from going out of business, they stop the settlement of those shares, resulting in firms like Weeble not being able to allow customers to trade those stocks. Right? Now, this is a good explanation of what happened. Why? Or why wouldn't Weibo wouldn't allow you to buy GameStop? The guy just said we didn't have the money. Our clearing house didn't have the money. Why? Because the rules got changed on us out of nowhere. Presumably because it's too volatile. Everybody thinks that this is this is it. It's just Robinhood didn't have money. Weibo didn't have money. And for example, E Trade and Charles Schwab and the bigger brokerages had money, so they didn't stop the trading. They they would just post a hundred percent of the trade, and you would be able to trade. While Robinhood and Weibo wouldn't do that. I think the truth is different. Now, what do we have here? Is the bio of the CEO of DTCC the company that is for changing the rules on everybody on Thursday.
He served in Morgan Stanley. Prior to that, he held similar responsibilities in Morgan Stanley in Hong Kong, Bear Stearns, and PricewaterhouseCoopers. Wow. So, the previous, the, the CEO of DTCC works for Bear Stearns, one of the most uh, famous investment banks to go bankrupt during the previous financial crisis. One, one of the ones that didn't get lucky to get bailed out. And the CEO of Citadel has been the CEO of a hedge fund for a long, long time. And you know, hedge funds are a big old boys club. They just hang out together, drink together, exchange wives, cars, whatever you can think of. They do those, those are gross motherfuckers. I'm proposing and I'm suggesting any investigation that is happening from SEC and anybody else, the CEO of Citadel, Citadel themselves, and DTC, and find out if there was any direct communication between Citadel and DTC. Because they bought them time to initiate new short positions on Wednesday at prices that were super, that were over $400, and allow them to cover their shorts if they did at much cheaper prices. Let's think about how that works. If you are the CEO of Citadel, and for example, on Monday, you put money into Melvin Capital for $2 billion, why would you do that for a fund that's about to go bust? They see what's going on with the short squeeze, and at the same time, you go and put in two billion just to bail out your friends. Hedge fund managers are unscrupulous people. If they don't have a gain in it, they're not going to invest money. So what I think happened is, even before Monday, but possibly on Monday, Citadel knew that those shares would be suspended from trading and not for just one day. That was just basically luck on the part of uh, Wall Street bets and the retail investors. They knew this was going to happen. Once this happens, and not suspended, but the requirements would be raised. Citadel knew this would happen. They knew that DTC would raise the requirements because the stocks are too vol uh, volatile. That would be the excuse. So once the, the price jumps up, they know when the announcement will be, you initiate your position right before that, have a short position right before that, whether it's through puts or through um, direct uh, short position. You know the next day there will be no buyers. And there's no buyers, price goes down. And what happened on Thursday? Up until close, the price was going down, it closed at 195. Right after that, it jumped to 360. How's that happen? It sounds to me like when somebody's covering a short position, that's exactly what happens when you have a massive short position covered. Price jumps. So who is able to do massive transactions like this after close? Retail investors can't. They couldn't. And when they were allowed to buy, it was after close. For example, with Robinhood, you cannot buy after close. Just giving you an example. And even if you could, Robinhood had a limit. Nothing that would suggest such a big move from 195 to 360. So the most logical common explanation, and we've seen that happen before after close, when there's been shorts and they, let's say, either got their way or didn't get their way, they cover and go home happy. So somebody on Thursday after close, after the, the price on GameStop got depressed enormously, covered a whole bunch of shorts. Whether it was the shorts that Melvin had, whether it was new shorts that were initiated the day before at 400 plus price, price doesn't matter. Somebody benefited hugely from this. Furthermore, they covered after the stock exchanges pressured DTC to lower the collateral required. They were ready, they probably shorted on Wednesday and they were waiting for the price to go down even further. Imagine if uh, 
uh, GameStop and the other stocks were uh, were not allowed to be bought on Friday as well. How how much that price would have gone down? It would have gone down to basically where it should be: fifty bucks, twenty bucks, thirty bucks. Just or at least chop it in half from one ninety five. At least chop it in half. So then it's even cheaper to cover the short positions. If you, the ones that are underwater, and it's much more profitable to cover the other ones that you initiated on Wednesday. And I don't understand how so many uh, financial gurus don't consider this happening. We know hedge funds talk to each other all the time and manipulate the market. The CEO of DTC is an ex hedge fund guy, one of the guys who went bankrupt in 2008. You don't think that the CEO of Citadel, and the CEO of DTC, and the CEO of Melvin, they don't talk to each other? They don't hang out, they don't drink, they don't talk about women, football, anything else in the Hamptons. They all do. That's what a big old boys club is. They all have those private events where they decide how to screw up the retail investors. And this was their last shot of doing it because Wall Street bets got organized. On top of that, on Wednesday, it became a mainstream media topic. And they knew they, were, they would be done. But they also knew the stocks would be prevented from purchased. And mostly, the, the big part is not just purchased, but purchased from the requirements raised to where the smaller brokerages, where the retail investors are, cannot afford to process those transactions. If you're in a big, in a big brokerage, like Schwab, for example, where baby boomers have their money, baby boomers are not buying GameStop they were able to buy. If you're in Robin Hood, you're not. You're a small retailer with a small brokerage. So, in my mind, what I think happened is Monday, probably at the very latest Tuesday, the hedge fund guys colluded with DTC and they knew what's coming. So they waited for the price to get pumped. They initiated new short positions. And that was even discussed on mainstream TV, like CNBC. They were lying that Melvin covered their shorts. And they were also saying that the smart money, the big money, is initiating new shorts. And on Thursday, they pulled the plug, raised the requirements from 2% to 100%, and you block out everyone but the big guys. How convenient. And another issue. Robin Hood has direct communication with Citadel all the time. Now, notice the difference between both CEOs' behavior. One of them is telling you how things are. He's telling you, DTC raised the requirements. We didn't have the money, so we couldn't handle the, the traffic. So we stopped uh, the buy orders. The other guy, first of all, will never mention the word DTC, even though he went all over Bloomberg, CNBC, CNN, and however many other news networks did not mention that word, did, was as vague as possible. And I believe he was directed to be as vague as possible by Citadel. He wasn't directed to not allow buying of shares, but after the fact happened, they, they told him, Keep your mouth shut. Do not mention the DTC word. And we're going to take care of you. Lawsuits, we got it. You need a billion dollars, we'll make it happen. Don't worry. We'll work it out. Just don't mention DTC. Be as vague as possible. Tell them it's regulations. It's SEC. It don't tell them it's liquidity or tell them it's liquidity. We don't care. Just don't mention the DTC word. And the Weibo CEO, who has no affiliation, just goes out and tells the truth. One of the guys has to go in and speak on speakerphone on Yahoo Live TV on YouTube. The other guy goes all over the other networks, interviews, explaining how it's regulation and it's not a liquidity issue, lying through his teeth. And I want to just make a little side note. Vlad Tenev is a Bulgarian. He's the only Bulgarian, and I'm Bulgarian too. He's the only Bulgarian that we have 
that this that's a ceo of a major company and right now he's considered the biggest embarrassment in bulgaria because everybody could see he's just reading from a script and he's a lying motherfucker but this is what i think happened citadel set that up monday at the latest tuesday and then when elon musk and chamat jumped the gun and pumped up the stock even more they actually liked that because they knew what's coming they knew that their buddy from the dtc the ex bear stearns guy will cover their asses and i haven't heard that as a theory anywhere and i hope this video or at least this theory gets picked up by other youtubers financial analysts whoever has the biggest megaphone please bring that to sec fbi whoever the fuck is responsible for this because if these guys talked on the phone if these guys talked through email signal whatsapp whatever i don't care there will be a paper trail or an electronic trail and if you catch them then then you can get what you need you get people in jail and not only that but you get that archaic system of settlement removed because if this whole thing was done on a bit on a blockchain not in a archaic settlement where it takes two days to get your money but if it's on a blockchain where all transactions are recorded and they're recorded because the people who requested to buy something have proven that they have the money dtc is not necessary the clearing houses are not necessary it's going to be much cheaper to have a brokerage company and much safer to have a bro brokerage company wall street doesn't want that they want to keep the way things have been since the 1800s they know that game they have it worked out and apparently they had one more stop that we didn't know about now we do and i guarantee you that's what happened because citadel knew dtc will screw over the small clearing houses and small brokerages and on top of that they had a mouthpiece from one of the small brokerages robin hood the guy the company for the small guys went and said nothing about that please if you don't like the video don't like it but share that theory to the people who actually will be able to find out what happened because i haven't heard that and you know that if you haven't heard it the ceo the sec which is paid by the hedge funds will not do anything about it and the doj will not do anything about it but if this becomes public theory and i don't want credit for it i just want it to become public then we have something then we get hedge funds in jail hedge fund managers in jail the dtc guy in jail and probably blockchain in a few years because the new york stock exchange and nasdaq might say fuck those motherfuckers we want our stock exchanges to work properly we're going blockchain thank you very much if you liked it hit like if you don't like it hit don't like or dislike whatever that thumbs down button is and if you want to know more about me hit subscribe thank you very much i'm nasco